Hi there. You might remember from a couple videos ago, so to speak, that uh, I was showed how to do a more circle inside of Excel. Well, I got a couple of requests, at least one, saying, "Hey, can we show how this doesn't how this works in MATLAB?" The reason I did Excel in the first place, and I'll be honest, I would have done it in MATLAB first myself, really, is that at the time with this whole um <clears throat> virus situation, if you see the date in the video, you'll understand. Uh I didn't really have access to MATLAB. Now I do. So here we are with me in a remote desktop, nice stuff. And I'm able to show how this works in MATLAB now. So what this is, is a more circle live script. Very simple, very quick, right? And I've made it optional to have the, uh, to have inputs for it. Okay, what it's gonna plot is the more circle and the initial stress state. What I've got here though, this could be done with user input, input statements in MATLAB, they're pretty straightforward. If you know MATLAB, you know how to use these. I could simply uncomment these and comment in these variables. I'm hard coding them as programmers like to say. So I, in order to change the, change the values, I have to change the variables. Here I'm seeing negative 75 for sigma x, 60 for sigma y, 45 for tau xy. My brain sees those numbers and thinks MPA, right? So I'm thinking megapascals here. And the way we build the circle is the same as what we did with Excel, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the equation of a circle. We have our sigma variable, which is X, our tau variable, which is Y, and our circle is centered at the average normal stress in the X direction and zero in the Y direction. That's where more circle lives. The radius comes from that equation that we have for radius. So first thing we need to do is compute that. We're gonna compute our principal stresses by simply using the usual equation for that square root in the principal stress equation, the difference between the normal stresses divided by two squared plus tau xy squared, all square rooted. And our center of the circle is gonna be at sigma x plus sigma y over two. And then our bigger principal stress in the plane, our principal stress sigma, sigma one as we typically call it, is center plus radius. And the other one on the plane is center minus radius. We know this, we've done this, right? And then this is where it gets easier in MATLAB than in Excel. Okay, because I can just define a single vector sigma, which is lin space from sigma two, the smaller one, to sigma one, the larger one. And I use a thousand one points. That's a habit I have because if I go from zero to 10, right? Or from, let's say from, yeah, let's say from zero to 10, I don't want to have 10 numbers from zero to 10 because then all the ones in between are, aren't even. I like landing on the even numbers where I can. I put that extra one on the end. That's just me. If you make this a thousand instead of a thousand one, no big deal. Then I evaluate the shear stress by using the plus and minus square root because that equation that we have, if I solve the equation of the circle for y, which is tau, right? I'm just gonna solve it for y, which again is tau. What I'm gonna have is y equals the square root of some stuff, right? R squared minus x minus xc squared, all square rooted. MATLAB, of course, when I put that in, is going to return the positive root. I also want the negative because I want to be above and below the horizontal axis. I want to make the whole circle. So I have to have both of them. And then when I plot, I just use one big plot statement. I could make two plot statements and put a hold on it. You're going to see I'm going to turn hold on later. That's going to hold on to the, onto the plots that I have. That's because I want to plot the diameter that connects the principal stresses and the diameter that connects the uh, the initial stress state while I'm, while I'm at it. Okay. Label my axes with sigma and tau. And then I use this command here. If you remember from the Excel video, sometimes your Excel circle can look like an ellipse or a football or something, as opposed to looking like a circle. That's because the aspect ratio, as they say, isn't necessarily right. You want it to be one to one. You want to have the same kind of uh, same dimension for width and height, the same ratio of the uh, of distances in the width and the height direction. The axis square command does exactly that in MATLAB makes it so that your circle is going to look circular, right? Then we're going to add in our diameter for principal stresses. I said a hold on was coming. There it is, right? And I plot sigma one, sigma two. Those are my X values with my Y values of zero, zero. I get a horizontal line. And then here I plot sigma X, sigma Y. The reason I have minus tau X, Y is remember a little stress block, right? I'm our stress block. A positive shear stress has an upward force on the plus, plus X face. That causes a counterclockwise couple. We plot counterclockwise couples below the, the sigma axis. So I need to put a negative sign on that. That's my concession to the way we plot more circle. I throw a grid on here and we're done. How done are we? That done. 
okay? Here's my Mohr circle for that case that I've got there. Quick, easy peasy. Here's my X point. Here's my Y point. My center's sitting in here someplace. I want to know what the principal stress is. Well, if I have it plotted like this, nothing says I can't just zoom in on it. Looks like about 73 point, I'd call it 73.6 units, and I'd be on my way. I can zoom out again. I can get the smallest principal stress too. I have 73.6 on one side. I'll bet you I have, oh, there we go, minus 88.6 on the other side. There we go. And there is our Moore's circle plotted for MATLAB. How do I know this works? Do it again with different numbers. Let's say my sigma x is 12, my sigma y is 8, and my tau xy is negative 5. Okay, so with this setup, what we know is that my x point, right, since tau xy is negative, that's a clockwise couple on the x phases. That means we plot it above the sigma axis, right? So I should have 12 with my diameter plotted with a number above the sigma axis with a positive number. If I've done it right, that's going to happen. Also, it looks like my average normal stress should be 10. And by the way, I'm thinking KSI as I write this. That's the size of the magnitude of these numbers leads me to believe that. Let's run this thing. We get a warning about imaginary parts of complex X and Y arguments. You might remember the Excel file. We had to throw in some kind of guard against in case there was an error because if it got a negative square root, Excel threw up a pound sign number and panicked, right? MATLAB doesn't panic. MATLAB says, hey, you got complex numbers here. Just so you know, I'm going to plot it anyway. I'm going to ignore the complex part. But don't worry about it. Or the imaginary part, but don't worry about it. It's there. The imaginary parts are these small, spurious little things anyway. Right? We're going to have a pure imaginary number. It's going to plot zero instead, which is what we want for that anyway. It's a small numerical error is what it comes down to because computer math isn't exact. And here's my circle. Hey, look, the center's sitting at 10. Winning. Right? We said the 12 should be plotted with a value above the horizontal axis. Well, there it is. Right, there's 12, 5. Here's 8, negative 5. Principal stresses, let's see. They're over here. This, I had to guess it's, it's about 15 and a half, maybe? All right, 15.4. Right? It's more circle. We don't have to be that exact. Right? We expect to be off the actual number by a percent or two, and that's fine. Right? And here we have more circle in MATLAB. Yes, again, as I said at the beginning, if you told me, if I had my full array of tools available and you said, you have to plot something for this, I'm using MATLAB. It's easier. It's quicker. It takes care of some numerical issues more readily. That box I just highlighted. Yes, fine. MATLAB got a, got a negative number in the square root and said, Dah, I'm... It's imaginary. You don't want it. I'm going to plot the real part, which is zero. Great. I just wanted zero anyway, right? MATLAB's a little more elegant like that, and I have a little more control. Now, what you can do on your own, something that when I first sat down to do this, I got ambitious. I thought I might, and I said, you know, exercise for the reader, as they say. You could, if you wanted to, plot in an arbitrary rotation, right? You could draw a line for any rotation here. You got two ways to do it. Personally, the way that I would choose, I define my zero angle. Let me pull up this circle in zoomed form again. I define zero angle over here on the from the center out toward the biggest principal stress. You know what the angle, or you can get the angle to the uh, you can get the angle to the uh, to the initial state from there. If you want to rotate, say 40 degrees from there, you just go an extra 80 degrees on the circle on top of the angle you already have. That's not that hard to program. It's something that you can certainly try to do on your own. All right. So questions, comments, go ahead and fire away. This video, of course, came about because I saw someone said, hey, can you do this and can you show them how this happens in MATLAB? So why not? Let's do it. All right. Take care. See you next time.